So, for one last time, Brexit. So now that the UK are finally leaving the EU, I think my hope is that I think we might actually get to talk about other issues now, because after the past four years, after talking about nothing else but Brexit, I'm hoping that now that is over, we can get on with solving other issues. Because I think people forgot that there are actually other issues besides Brexit that is currently happening in the country, which I think we've neglected over the past four years because we were so fixated with Brexit. Well, I'm not that attached to the European Union anyway, and I shed no tears about our exit. But what I do regret is how the whole thing happened, because we could have avoided a hard right Boris Johnson Brexit if we did a few things differently. So those are things that I will regret. I don't think a second referendum was ever a good idea. And I don't think there was even a majority for a second referendum anywhere in the country. I mean, it failed to get through Parliament a few times. A public opinion was very against it. The first time Labour called for a second referendum, we saw their polling in the polls die down. So. That was never a good option, and I think that was one of the reasons that cost us the last election. When you look at the election results since 2014, like the European elections and general elections, there has been some consensus to leave the EU. And that's not something I would ever deny, but I think the problem is, I think we kind of allowed ourselves to think that it's either hard remain, which is the current deal we have now, or hard Brexit, which is completely cutting ourselves from all ties of Europe and those were never the only two options that we had. There were so many other options and I think we allowed ourselves to get trapped between remain or no deal but this isn't a no deal but we allowed ourselves to get trapped with that and that's what got us into a situation like this. Jeremy Corbyn was proposing before the right of the party forced us to go down the second referendum issue which was a customs union deal with British say a new trade deal is basically a new agreement with the EU that kept us close with close ties to it. So we're basically promising a soft Brexit, which we thought was a good compromise. And to be honest, that was probably the position I favoured the most. But now we have a Boris Johnson Brexit, which offers none of that. And like one thing that really, you know, got to my heart was that the, the Conservative government kind of went back on their pledges to help child refugees reunite with their families and you know only a conservative government would do something as heartless as that wouldn't they if joe swinson who like vowed to try her best to stop brexit if she just backed corbyn as an interim pm for like two weeks to legislate for a second referendum this all could have been avoided so i will always laugh at joe swinson because she did her best to try stop brexit but her actions kind of allowed the hardest form of Brexit to happen. So like, that's like an own gunshot in the head, isn't it? This whole Remain Alliance that Joe Swinton kind of cooked up, to be honest, I never really understood it because, because why did she stand candidates against Labour candidates like Rosie Duffield, like Stephen Morgan, who had um, very small majorities, but were very passionately Remain. So I will, so I don't understand that Remain Lions. And there was an article that was posted by the London Economic.com that kind of said that um, Jo Swinton vowed to stop Brexit, but she did more than anyone else to make it happen, which I will post in the description below because I laughed out loud when I was reading that and the points are very good. So you all should read that, definitely. But you know, I will definitely say this, that EU citizens will always be welcome in my country. And you know, this is your home and you made your lives here. And I am truly sorry about the settled status uh, program that the Tories are running, which is making a lot of lives miserable. And I am really sorry about that. And you know, what? I am sad at the thought of all the damage that the Tories can do for the next four years until the next election. And we must do everything we can over the next four years to make sure Labour get back into government because in a post-Brexit Britain, under a hard right government, a Labour government will be needed more than ever. I guess now that Brexit is finally coming to an uh, end, I guess the choice of what path we take in a post-Brexit Britain is entirely up to 
the British people because we can be an internationalist country which has close ties to the EU and tries to have close ties with countries around the world or we could go backwards as a country especially on our trades and our principles or our rights and standards and that will never be a good idea so the choice of what path we take as a country after Brexit is entirely up to us and I really hope that we use the opportunities that we have now to basically become a an opening country, an internationalist country, a country that doesn't cut ourselves off from the rest of the world because we may be leaving a political union of the European Union, but we are not leaving the continent. Trade negotiations are due to start in March and apparently um, Boris Johnson wants to do a trade deal with Trump and that trade deal with Trump really does get me worried because we could be in a position where we might have to accept lower food standards from the US and the US have hinted that they do want our National Health Service uh, as part of a trade deal to uh, to like sell it off to private US companies and if that's something that is even on the table and if that's something that is a possibility of even happening then Labour need to fight every step of the way to stop that from happening and they need to hold this government to account every step of the way. We must protect the living standards and jobs of the people living in this country. And what was very disgraceful to me is that as soon as the Brexit vote happened, there was no guarantee for EU citizens and there were no guarantees for their rights to live here, which to be honest, that should have been day one. Day one, the government should have said, EU citizens, we might be leaving the European Union, but you will always be welcome here and your right to live here will not be inflicted. And that is something that the government should have been saying since day one. But unfortunately, Theresa May wanted to use them as bargaining chips. And I think early on in the trade, in the negotiations, EU citizens were going to be charged a fee to apply to live here, but then very quickly after backlash, that fee was dropped, which was a good decision. Also, I am a bit worried about British nationals living in the EU. Like, I'm not sure what will happen. I don't think that's even decided yet. This now is the time to bring everyone together, whatever side you took on the debate, either if you were a Leaver or if you were a Remainer. Now is the time to come together to try and make Britain the best country it could be in the future where we will no longer be in the European Union. Like we did see after the Brexit debate that there was a rise in crime and there was a rise of racism and a rise in xenophobia and I just hope that after we are fully outside of the European Union that Britain doesn't turn into some intolerant place to live in because that's not who we are as a society and that's not who we are as a country either. Boris Johnson is due to address the country tonight at 10 p.m. so I'm very looking forward to seeing what he has to say about the whole debacle. The surgeon did address the country today in uh, a speech this morning and she was basically um, recommitting herself to trying to do everything she can to um, get an Indie worth two because she still remains in her argument that Brexit is against the will of the Scottish people, which I can almost understand that. So I'm very interested to see about the future of Scotland as well, because in my opinion, if they did get an Indy Ref 2, there is no doubt in my mind that they would vote yes in a high proportion this time. So I think that's why the Tory government is really scared of granting permission for an Indy Ref 2, because I honestly believe that they will vote yes this time. And I think they probably would have voted yes last time as well, but if it wasn't for like the last minute vow uh, that the then UK government, uh, which was signed by Labour and the Lib Dems as well, if it wasn't for that last minute vow, then I believe Scotland would have voted yes last time. Uh, interesting to note that uh, not every promise in that vow was actually delivered. So I can understand if some Scottish people are very angry today. If you are a Leaver or a Remainer, I hope you have the best day possible. And if you are a Remainer, I hope you're not in too much despair about the future of, of this country. And if you are a Leaver, congratulations, you got what you wanted. So I just hope that we all come together now and call for unity and just to try and make a post-Brexit Britain a more fairer and a more tolerant society. And I just hope that we use the opportunities that uh, do come to us in the post-Brexit Britain to be more radical in our politics. That is the thing I will end on. So I hope all of you have a good day and thank you very much for watching. Bye.